I'm Mark Gilbert here. Thanks for clicking in. This video is entitled, You Determine Your Welfare. And like all the videos on this channel, they're designed to give you some tools and ideas for assisting with our spiritual evolution. This continues our series where we're looking at the short Ernest Holmes book, The Basic Ideas of Science of Mind. And in this particular video, we're looking at Chapter 5. Now, each of these videos stands alone in and of themselves, so you can watch one and get benefit from listening to this particular content. But if you take all of the ones that we're doing regarding this book and put them together, and especially by reading the book simultaneously that you're going through the videos, you're going to get a great orientation to the philosophy of the science of mind. Now, as I said, this video is entitled, You Determine Your Welfare, which is the title of Chapter 5. I would probably have entitled the chapter something like, Know Yourself, because that's really how Holmes starts the chapter. He asks us to consider that we truly know ourselves. And what does he mean by that? He says, we must know the relationship of our mind, body, and emotions so that we can control them wisely and direct them for our own welfare. That's a key concept in Science of Mind. Is understanding this interrelationship between our mind, body, and emotions, and bringing them into alignment so they're all focused on giving us the greatest good for our lives and what we desire. Now, there's a quote at the outset of this chapter that I want to read to you verbatim because I think it is so crucial to some of the essential ideas behind this philosophy. Holmes writes, All is spirit. Spirit is mind. Mind is one. There is no separation between God and you, except to the degree you think you're separated. What does he mean by all of this? What he's trying to get us to see is a, is a change in our orientation. We tend to go through our lives thinking that we are these individuals that are walking around and we're interacting with all this stuff out there, and sometimes we're feeling victimized by it, sometimes we're getting joy and benefit from it, other times we think things are not going our way, but we see ourselves as separate and apart from the life in which we're living. What he wants us to see is that all, everything, but their internal thoughts and awareness, as well as all of the things that we think are external, all are spirit. Spirit is mind. Well, if all is spirit, then all is mind. We're basically living and swimming and, and having our very existence in an ocean of mind energy. This is a reorientation of the concept of mind. We tend to think of mind as the conscious awareness that's bubbling up with the thoughts and uh, that are occurring within the, you know our skulls. But he wants us to, to move beyond that limited concept of mind. We're using big mind with our use of our little minds within our awareness. But we are living continuously in this, this flowing ocean of mind energy. So everything that is in the world of form and non-form is really spirit, it's mind, it's one. There is an essential oneness to everything. And we are living and moving and having our very being in that oneness. The more that we can anchor that awareness of oneness into our very being, the more we have freedom to create the life that we want. The more that we can bring our mind, body, and emotions into alignment for the highest vision for what we have for ourselves in our particular lives, as well as this planet. So what is one of the key ways that Holmes says that we can know ourselves? It's by understanding and recognizing the pattern of habits that we have in our lives. He writes... Every day we should be adding to those habits which are desirable, now that we know how to do it and how they work. What does he mean? Well, he means we have developed through our history and through our past a whole series of habits. Some are benefiting us and some are holding us back. And what we need to do is start recognizing the habits that are occurring in our life so that we can make conscious choices to repattern them. If they're working for us, great. If they're bringing about happiness and more life and more fulfillment and all that we're doing, those are habits that we want to build upon. But if we've developed habits of negativity or habits that are leading us down a path of having a less than life, then we want to see those habits for what they are and replace them with better habits, better thoughts. But then you might ask, where do the habits come from? Holmes says they come from our histories, the patterns of experiences that we've had that have led to a storehouse of memories that are contained within us. Many Science of Mind classes actually ask us to go back and look at our life events so that we can see where our hidden beliefs come from. If we can identify the events that led us to believing something that is not do serving us, then we can help 
that helps us to replace those beliefs with new beliefs. But do we have to go back and dwell on the, the past and, and, and jump into it to the nth degree? Interestingly, Holmes says no, and he says it in the following way. This does not mean that you must refresh your memory of old influences and events which did you harm. There's no need to know all about them or review them. But you do want to get rid of them because you can't afford to harbor any longer anything which is injurious. The key here is that sometimes certain types of therapy will have us get into and relive those moments. Holmes is saying we don't necessarily need to do that because by the power of our ch conscious choice, the very fact that we're aware of how that event created the belief that we're holding and the habit that we have created, that allows us to then bring free will choice in and change it. So how do we replace our old beliefs with new beliefs? Once we've identified that we've got these old habits that aren't serving us, how do we bring new habits into being? Here's how Holmes describes one way that we can do that. He says that all during the day and as you're about to fall asleep, think of all the positive and desirable character traits you can, whether you are now expressing them or not. Then declare that all that is contrary to them is cleared out and that only the positive, desirable, and good traits are being established as your experience by the creative action of your thought. In other words, turn your attention away from those things that are no longer serving you. Yes, you see them. They're giving you contrast for what you no longer want in your life. See them only as a guidepost for something to say, ah, I no longer want that. I'm turning from it. And then recognize what are the key characteristics and traits you wish to see in your life and then affirm that continuously. All during the day, as you're going to sleep at night, know that these traits are coming into your life. Build that thought awareness. The more you can build more of knowing what it is you are wanting in your life and seeing it in your life as it's already there, then the more you're going to create that. Now, Holmes does recognize that there's a part of us that says we're not worthy of being all that we can be or having all that we want in this lifetime. He recognizes that many of us walk around with a, some sort of inferiority complex. So he closes this short chapter where he's asking us to know ourselves by recognizing where we're feeling inferior and to let go of that sense of inferiority. To that point, Holmes writes the following. Therefore, all godlike qualities are inherent in you. How then could you be inferior to anyone? He reminds us that we are containing life, love, wisdom, peace, power, beauty, and joy. These are characteristics that are your birthright, that are a part of you just by the very nature that you are this spiritual being moving through this human experience. Your spiritual essence contains these characteristics, and the more you can concentrate on them being in your life, the more that you can manifest them into your awareness. He says, reason it out and come to know that there is absolutely nothing that could deny God in you. Your conscious mind, however, must back it up by the complete cooperation of your every thought, the continual implanting of affirming ideas of good. So, how do you determine your welfare? Well, your welfare is created by your awareness of knowing yourself, by bringing into alignment your mind, your body, and your emotions so that you continuously see that you are a divine being of God, that you contain these divine characteristics, and that you are replacing old patterns and old beliefs that you have stored up into your memory bank, replacing those with the awareness of the divine qualities that exist within you. The more you can replace old patterns of belief with new patterns, the more you're going to manifest your life and create the highest degree of life, love, and joy on this planet. I hope this has been beneficial for you. If so, drop me a comment or a question. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks for watching. Till next time.
Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. There's a similar video right here next to my face if you want to click on it. Also, if you want to get notifications of future videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button on the bottom left-hand corner. If you'd like to contact me, email me at the address on the screen or drop me a comment in the comment field below on YouTube. Thanks.